Hello, my name is Peter Ashkai. I am from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Victoria in Canada. And my co-authors are from the University of Victoria and Kanazawa University in Japan. I'm going to talk about the effect of cordwise flexibility on propulsive performance of high inertia oscillating foils. This study is motivated by biomimicry. Uh, the oscillating foil propulsion mechanism is uh, common in marine animals, fish and mammals, uh, who oscillate the fins to propel themselves forward. This type of locomotion offers some advantages compared to conventional rotary uh, propellers in terms of high instantaneous forces that can be generated and they're beneficial for maneuvering and also the uh, low acoustic noise. In this particular study, we are primarily interested in the effect of structural properties of the foil on the propulsive performance. And I will talk about those structural properties uh, later. But generally, in terms of parametric space, we consider the pitch and heave amplitude as, uh, as one parameter and also the frequency, this true hole number, as another. We perform direct measurements of the flow-induced forces on the foil, and that allows us to calculate uh, thrust and efficiency. And we also perform quantitative flow imaging. We apply uh, particle image velocimetry, or PIV, and the photography itself, the imaging, allows us to measure deformation of the foil as it oscillates, and the measurement of the flow velocity uh, allows us to uh, assess contribution of individual vertical structures in the flow on the flow induced forces. The structural properties of the foil that we considered are the stiffness and inertia. We considered three cases. One is the reference case, the rigid foil. And the two other cases which we refer to foil A and foil B or the stiff and soft foil have the same external geometry as the rigid foil. It's essentially a thick plate with a rounded leading edge and a tapered trailing edge. And the rigid foil has a reinforcement. It has a steel plate uh, along the length of the foil as well as the lead weight embedded towards the trailing edge, which increases its inertia. The foil B is made of silicon rubber. It's completely flexible uh, relative to the, uh, the other two. All three foils undergo a combination of a pitching and heaving motion. Pitching is just translation, a sinusoidal oscillation in the direction transverse to the incoming flow. And the pitch is rotation around the axis indicated here. So the combination results in a trajectory shown schematically on this slide and the uh, dimensionless time or the phase along the oscillating cycle is uh, T star, as indicated here. So the parameters that we consider are the amplitude of the heaving motion and the amplitude of the pitching motion. That those uh, motions are uh, the same type. They are sinusoids with the same frequency, but the phase between them varies. And in fact, we use the negative values of theta zero to indicate the phase uh, where the foil is pitching down as it moves up. And for the positive values of theta, the foil is pitching up as it moves up um, in this schematic. This is a schematical representation of our experimental system. The foil was uh, attached to a translation stage. The heaving motion provided the oscillations in the transverse direction and we attached the uh, uh, pitching motor to it, which provided rotation. So it was moving along this translation stage. The foil was attached to the pitching motor through a three axis load cell, which allowed us to measure the flow induced forces on it. So the forces in the stream wise transverse direction as well as the rotating moment. And in terms of the flow imaging, we applied two-dimensional PIV, and we related these flow patterns to the measured forces uh, on the foil. So looking at the results, let's look at the flow-induced forces first. In terms of thrust generation, uh, this slide shows 
plots of the thrust coefficient, which we define as the force in the streamwise direction, normalized by dynamic pressure. It's plotted for the three foils, the rigid, the stiff, and the soft foil, as a function of the pitch amplitude and the through hole number. The contours show the values of the generated thrust. You can see that for all foils, the thrust monotonically increased with the through hole number, which is an expected result. However, uh, the high values of thrust were observed at the were or rather were achieved at relatively high values of the pitch and amplitude for the rigid foil while for the flexible foil the um, high pitching angles were not required uh, so as i will show later this is related to the deformation and effectively to the angle of the trailing edge of the foil that that occurs as uh, as the flexible foil oscillates in water um, Generally, high thrust was generated by flexible foils um, in the, um, particularly in the regime where we had heave only oscillations, so zero pitch, so on the up and down. Uh, this is indicated by this red dot in the parameter space, and I will show the uh, corresponding flow patterns uh, for this oscillating condition a little later. But before doing this, let's take a look at the input power that's required to achieve this oscillatory motion. So same set of uh, parameters, uh, defining the parameter space, so the uh, pitching amplitude and the through hole number, but this time we plot the contours of the power coefficient, so where P is the input power to the system. And you can see that the plots for the three types of foils look qualitatively the same, so the uh, uh, power uh, input power increases as the through hole number increases. If we consider the propulsive efficiency, which we define here as the ratio of the thrust coefficient and the pressure coefficient, uh, the, the input uh, power coefficient rather, uh, we can see that the efficiency is substantially higher for the for both flexible foils both in terms of the uh, peak values of efficiency and also the uh, ranges of parameters that correspond to higher efficiency values so th uh, that is significant for practical applications it hints that the range of uh, practically achievable operating conditions would be larger for flexible foils than for the uh, uh, than for the um, rigid ones. Also, an interesting observation is that previous studies showed that increase in efficiency of the flexible foils compared to the rigid foils uh, is typically achieved at the expense of the generated thrust. However, this set of experiments shows that there exists a set of operating conditions for which both thrust and efficiency are higher for flexible foils. Um, so that is um, actually related, uh, as I mentioned before, to the effective angle of the trailing edge of the foil, which in turn defines the structure of the, uh, the wake. We consider instantaneous forces. In this case, uh, the left plot shows the thrust and the uh, uh, the, well, rather, the forces in the streamwise direction, and for completeness, we show the forces in the transverse direction in the uh, right plot, although they don't con contribute to the thrust. But um, the vectors, the red vectors, correspond to the rigid foil, and the blue and the purple ones to the two flexible foils here. They're plotted along the kinematic trajectory um, of the foil oscillation and the time progresses here from right to left in the oscillating cycle. You can see that in the case of the flexible foils, the large forces are generated early in the cycle and also early after the reversal of the uh, uh, heave motion, while in the case of the rigid foil, the large amplitude forces are generated towards the middle of the cycle when the, uh, the heaving uh, motion uh, is decelerating. 
this timing of the generation of the forces is related to the shading of the vortices into the wake and this can be um, can be observed uh, by looking at the vorticity controls, uh, vorticity contours of the uh, flow around the foil. The bottom row of images corresponds to the flexible foil and the top row is the rigid foil, but the same phases. The differences between the flow structure are related to the timing of the uh, generation of the negative vorticity here this uh, blue negative vortex is shed from the trailing edge much early in the cycle in the case of the rigid foil uh, so there is a delay in in vortex shedding from the trailing edge um, and also because of the deformation of the foil itself as it undergoes the oscillations the overall width of the wake is larger in the case of the flexible uh, flexible foil oscillations we can re relate this vorticity patterns or the the flow structures to the measured uh, forces that the flow induced forces on the plate through the uh, um, rates of change of the moments of vorticity here r is the uh, moment arm from the center of mass of the foil to the location in the flow field and omega is the vorticity value there let's consider for example for the case of the rigid foil on the left the moments of vorticity that contribute to the x direction forces so they would be um, calculated like this where the moment arm is the y arm from the center of mass to the location where we observe the vorticity and we integrate that quantity over the flow field you can see that early in the cycle the main contributor so the line here represents the overall moment of vorticity in the x direction the early in the cycle the main contributor is the vorticity uh, the positive vorticity here so the empty symbols correspond to positive vorticity because they are located farther away at that phase from the foil so they they contribute more to the calculated force and then as that vorticity leaves the field of view we don't account for it in the calculation anymore but the negative vorticity is shed so the its magnitude increases and it becomes a dominant contribution uh, in the overall flow induced force the right hand side plot shows the soft foil the one that deflects the most uh, and the uh, as i mentioned in the when i was looking at the uh, uh, vorticity plots the shedding of the negative vorticity is delayed in the oscillation cycle and so the the contribution of this black symbols to the calculated moment is delayed as well so we can we have a different distribution of instantaneous forces so in conclusion uh, we uh, we observe from this study that uh, the optimal trailing edge angle exists uh, for the oscillating foil propulsion mode and that can be achieved either through the change in the in the phase between the heaving and pitching motion so that it can be programmed into the motion of the rigid foil for example or it can be achieved by passive deformation of the foil due to interaction with the surrounding fluid um, also the roles of the pressure and inertia forces during different phases of the oscillating cycle are different for rigid and flexible foils with that, I'd like to conclude and thank you for your attention.